If 16x plus 4 equals 100, what is the value of x? I'm going to start by writing this problem again. So our goal is to find out what x is. That means our goal is to find out what number would make this equation true. And we could guess a bunch of numbers until we found the right answer, or we could take these four answers and plug them in until we found the number that would make this equation true. But we have an algebraic way to do it. And that is to start by subtracting 4 from both sides. Because since these two sides are equal to each other, to keep them equal, we have to do the same thing to both sides. So we have 16x plus 4 minus 4. Those are additive inverses of each other. That means they add to be 0, so we can cancel them out bring down the equal sign, and then 100 minus 4 is 96. So now we have 16 times x equals 96. The opposite of multiplying times 16 is dividing by 16. So to get x alone, we need to divide both sides by 16. That way our equation is still equal. 16 divided by 16 is 1, and 1 times x is x. And x equals, now we have to divide 96 by 16. So how many times does 16 go into 96? Hmm, well, we could always guess, um, I would guess 6 times. 6 times 6 is 36, carry the 3. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 3 is 96. So that means that 96 divided by 16 is 6. 96 divided by 16 then is 6. So x equals 6. Answer choice A. Simplify the following expression the quantity 2x minus 20 times the quantity 5x plus 10. To multiply these two binomials, we can use a method called FOIL. And FOIL stands for first, O stands for outer, I stands for inner, and L stands for last. So the F first means to multiply the first term in the first binomial times the first term in the second binomial. First times first. 2x times 5x. 2 times 5 is 10. And x times x is x squared. So it's 10x squared. The O again stands for outer, so that means to multiply the two outside terms. So 2x and 10 are the two terms on the outside, the outer terms. So 2x times 10, 2 times 10 is 20, 2x times 10 is 20x. I stands for inner. That means to multiply the two terms on the inside. So that would be this negative 20 times 5x. Negative 20 times 5x. A negative times a positive is a negative. 20 times 5x is 100x. Then finally, we multiply the last terms together. So that means the last term in the first set of parentheses or in the first binomial times the last term in the second binomial, last times last. So that's negative 20 times 10, which is negative 200. A negative times a positive is a negative. We're almost done. The last thing we need to do is combine these like terms right here. 
20x and negative 100x. So it's really 20x minus 100x. Bring down the 10x squared first. And 20x minus 100x would be negative 80x. Then bring down the negative 200. So looking at our answer choices, looks like answer A would be the correct answer. What is the slope of a line with point A, negative 15, negative 4, and point B, 15, 4? To find the slope of a line, slope, we use M for slope usually in math. The slope is the change in Y divided by the change in X. And that triangle stands for change in. To find the change in y, you must subtract the y coordinates. So y2 minus y1. Likewise, to find the change in x, you must subtract the x coordinates in the same order. So x2 minus x1. Now where are these? Well, we were given two ordered pairs. So that means we have an x1 and a y1 and an x2 and a y2. So now we have the coordinates to substitute in to our slope formula. So we'll start with y2, which is 4, minus y1, which is a negative 4, divided by x2, which was 15, minus x1, which is negative 15. And then we simplify. So we can add the inverse, and 4 plus 4 is 8, divided by, and again we can add the inverse, and 15 plus 15 is 30. Now finally, we need to simplify our fraction. So we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 30 divided by 2 is 15. So that means that our slope is 4 fifteenths, which is answer choice A. Simplify the following expression. The quantity 2x to the fourth cubed plus 2 times the quantity y to the fifth raised to the fifth power. We have to use our rules of exponents here, and our rules tell us that whatever is inside the parentheses must be raised to the exponent outside that parentheses. So we have 2 cubed times x to the fourth cubed. So we're, when we raise an exponent to an exponent, we multiply those exponents together. Plus 2, and then again we have y to the fifth raised to the fifth. So another exponent raised to an exponent, and when you have an exponent raised to an exponent, those must be multiplied together. So y to the 5 times 5. And now we can simplify this. 2 cubed means 2 times itself 3 times, not 2 times 3. So it's 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So 2 cubed is 8 times x to the 4 times 3 is 12 plus 2 times y to the 5 times 5 is the 25th power, which is answer choice D. If a circle has a diameter of 12 centimeters, what is its area? The formula for area of a circle is pi times radius 
squared. We need to know what the radius of our circle is. We're given diameter, which is 12 centimeters. The diameter is twice the radius, or the radius is half of the diameter. So half of 12 centimeters would be 6 centimeters. So that means our radius is 6 centimeters. So we take our radius and substitute it into our formula. So area is pi times 6 centimeters squared. So the area is 6 squared, 36, pi centimeters squared. But if we look at our answers, none of our answers have pi in them. So that means that these answers are multiplied times pi. If you, don't have, if you have a calculator, then you can just multiply 36 times pi in the calculator. But if you don't have a calculator, then pi is approximately 3 and 14 hundredths. So take 3 and 14 hundredths and multiply that times 36. 6 times 4 is 24. Write the 4, carry the 2. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8. 6 times 3 is 18. Get rid of that. Put a 0 placeholder to move on to the 3. 3 times 4 is 12. Write the 2 and carry the 1. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. And 3 times 3 is 9. Now add these up. 4 plus 0 is 4. 8 plus 2 is 10. Write the 0, carry the 1. 8, 9 plus 4 is 13. Write the 3, carry the 1. 9, 10, 11. Now, we have two numbers behind the decimal place in our numbers we multiply together, so that means that our product must also have two numbers behind the decimal place. So our answer would be 113 centimeters squared, which is answer choice B. The length of a square is 15 centimeters. What is its area? Well, a square is a type of rectangle. And the formula for area of a rectangle is area equals the length times the width, or base times height. But what's special about a square is that its length and width are the same. So if we're told that the length is 15 centimeters, then that means the width is 15 centimeters as well. So we substitute 15 centimeters for the length and 15 centimeters for the width. So 15 times 15. 15 times 15, can multiply that out over here. 5 times 5 is 25. Write the 5, carry the 2. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7. Get rid of that, put your 0 placeholder. 1 times 5 is 5, and 1 times 1 is 1. Then we add these up. 5 and 0 is 5. 7 plus 5 is 12. Write the 2, carry the 1. And 1 plus 1 is 2. So 15 times 15 is 225. And centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared. So the area of a square with length 15 centimeters is 225 centimeters squared, which is answer choice D. A rectangular prism measures 12 centimeters by 3 centimeters by 9 centimeters. What is its volume? The formula for volume for a rectangular prism is volume equals length times width 
times height. And we were given those dimensions, length, width, and height. And really, it doesn't matter which one is the length, which one's the width, and which one's the height, since we're just going to multiply those three numbers together anyway. So the volume is 12 centimeters times 3 centimeters times 9 centimeters. And it's up to you which two you choose to multiply together first. You could start with 12 times 3. 3 times 2 is 6. And 3 times 1 is 3. So 12 centimeters times 3 centimeters is 36 centimeters squared times 9 centimeters. So then you could take 36 times 9. 9 times 6 is 54. 9 times 3 is 27. Plus 5 is 32. So 36 centimeters squared times 9 centimeters is 324 centimeters cubed, which is answer choice C. If 2x squared equals negative 4x squared plus 216, what is the value of x? I'm going to start by rewriting this problem so I have a little more room to work with it. And if we're trying to solve for x, then we'll need to get all our x's together. So I'm going to add 4x squared to both sides so that that way on the right-hand side, it'll cancel because I have a negative 4x squared and a positive 4x squared, and those are additive inverses. Now on the left-hand side, 2x squared plus 4x squared is 6 x squared. Bring down the equal sign and bring down 216. So this is 6 times x squared. So to get rid of this 6, we do the opposite of multiplying, which is dividing. Divide both sides by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1, and 1 times x squared is simply x squared. So those 6's cancel. And that equals, and now we can take 216 and divide it by 6. 6 does not go into 2, but it does go into 21. And 6 times 3 is 18. It goes in 3 times and we get 18. 21 minus 18 is 3. We bring down the 6. And 6 goes into 36 6 times. 6 times 6 is 36. So when we subtract, we get a 0 remainder. So that means that 216 divided by 6 is 36. So now we know what x squared equals, but we still haven't found what x equals. So to get x alone, we need to do the opposite of squaring x. And the opposite of squaring is 2 square root. So we square root both sides. The square root of x squared is simply x. And the square root of 36 is 6. So that means that x is 6. Answer, C. If a rectangle has a length of 5 centimeters and a width of 7 centimeters, what is its area? We're finding the area of a rectangle. The formula for area of a rectangle is area equals the length times the width. And we were given the length, 5 centimeters, and we were given the width, 7 centimeters. So all we have to do is substitute and solve. The area is length is 5 centimeters times the width, which is 7 centimeters. So the area is 
5 times 7 is 35 centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared. So the area is 35 centimeters squared, which is answer choice B. On a six-sided die, each side has a number between one and six. What is the probability of throwing a three or a four? This die has six sides. So that means our total is six, which is the denominator of our fraction for finding our probability. We want to know what the probability of throwing a three or, and that is a key word, three or a four. So if it lands on either one of those, we're good. So that's two different numbers that we could land on out of our six different numbers. And then of course we can simplify our fraction by dividing the numerator and the denominator both by two. Two divided by two is one, and 6 divided by 2 is 3, so it's 1 in 3. Or, written like this, a 1 in 3 chance. Solve for y in the following inequality. Negative 2y is greater than or equal to 24 plus 6. So the first thing we want to do is combine these like terms, 24 plus 6. So we have negative 2y is greater than or equal to, and 24 plus 6 is 30. To solve for y, we need to divide by a negative 2. Since we have negative 2 times y, to undo that and get y alone, we divide both sides by negative 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1, and 1 times y leaves us with just y. Now since we divided both sides by a negative, we have to flip our inequality sign. It was greater than or equal to, so now it's less than or equal to and 30 divided by a negative 2. A positive number divided by a negative number is a negative number, and 30 divided by 2 is 15. That means that y is less than or equal to negative 15, which is answer choice C. If 2x equals 5x minus 30, what is the value of x? The first thing we want to do to solve for x is to get all of our x terms on the same side of the equal sign. We have 2x on the left side of the equal sign, and we have 5x on the right side of the equal sign. We have two options here. We can either subtract 2x from both sides, and that way we would get rid of 2x on the left side. Or we can subtract 5x from both sides and get rid of 5x on the right side. I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. This is called the subtraction property of equality. Because I have the left side equal to the right side, then I could subtract the same thing from both sides, and they'll still be equal. 2x minus 5x is negative 3x. We bring down our equal sign. 5x minus 5x is 0, because those are additive inverses. So we've canceled that out. And what we have left on the right side is negative 30. Now we have negative 3 times x is equal to negative 30. So to solve for x, we need to do the opposite of multiplying by a negative 3, which is dividing both sides by a negative 3. 
negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. And 1 times x is just x. So we have x equals negative 30 divided by negative 3. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. And 30 divided by 3 is 10. So x equals 10, which is answer choice A. What is the value of 6 factorial? What 6 factorial means is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And so in, since we're just multiplying a series of numbers, you can multiply them in any order you want. So you can take any two numbers and multiply those together first and then continue multiplying. Um, but I'll just multiply them in order. So we have 6 times 5, which is 30, um, times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1. Then we can multiply 30 times 4. We have 30, 60, 90, 120. So 30 times 4 is 120, times 3, times 2, times 1. Then 120 times 3, 120 times 3, 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 1 is 3. So 360 times 2 times 1, and 360 times 2, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 6 is 12, carry the 1, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7, so 720 times 1, and 720 times 1 is just 720. So 6 factorial is equal to 720. Answer C. Solve for x in the following inequality. 4x plus 23 is greater than negative 3x minus 6. The first thing we want to do is get all of our x terms on the same side of the inequality. I'm going to do this by adding 3x to both sides. 4x plus 3x is 7x bring down the plus 23, and bring down the greater than sign. Negative 3x plus 3x, those are additive inverses, so they cancel. Bring down the negative 6. Next, we want to remove 23. The opposite of adding 23 is subtracting 23. So subtract 23 from both sides. Bring down the 7x. Plus 23 and negative 23 are additive inverses, so they cancel. Bring down the greater than sign. Negative 6 and negative 23, they have the same signs, they're both negative, which means our answer is negative, and we just add the numbers together. 23 plus 6 is 29, so it's negative 29. Finally, we have to divide both sides by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1, and 1 times x is simply x. Bring down the greater than sign. And then the first thing I'll do is change this into a mixed number. Since I can't actually divide negative 29 by 7 and get an integer. So 7 goes into negative 29 four times, so it's negative four. Four times seven is 28, so that means that there's one left over out of seven. So it's negative four and one-seventh. X is greater than negative four and one-seventh. Now if we look at the answers, you'll see that all the answers are in decimal form. And we can find out what one-seventh is as a decimal by dividing. So 7 doesn't go into 1, 
So we'll have to put a decimal here, which means bring a decimal to the top and add a zero to it. Seven does go into 10 one time. Seven times one is seven. We subtract and we get three. Add another zero, bring it down, and seven goes into 30 four times. Seven times four is 28. We subtract and we get two. And we can stop there because all of our answers stop at the hundreds place as well. So we could write this as x is greater than negative four and 14 hundredths, which is answer choice A. If 2x plus 5x equals 3x plus x plus 30, what is the value of x? So first I'm going to combine like terms on both sides of the equal sign. On the left side, I can combine 2x plus 5x to give me 7x. Bring down this equal sign. And on the right side, we can combine 3x plus x. So 3x plus another x gives us 4x. And then bring down the plus 30. Next, we need to get all of our x terms on the same side of the equal sign. We'll do this by subtracting 4x from both sides. 7x minus 4x is 3x. Bring down the equals. 4x minus 4x cancels. They're additive inverses. And we bring down the positive 30. Finally, we need to divide both sides by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 1 times x is simply x. So x equals 30 divided by 3, which is 10. And that's answer choice D. Three x squared y plus y divided by two minus six x. If x equals four and y equals 10, what is the value of the expression? First, I'm going to take our expression and copy it. Next, we need to substitute these numbers we were given for their variables. So we're going to replace our x's with 4's. So we have 3, and this is 3 times x squared, so it's 3 times 4 squared times y, which is 10, plus y divided by 2, or 10 divided by 2, minus 6 times x, and we're replacing x with 4. To simplify this expression, we need to follow the order of operations, which some people know as PEMDAS. And in PEMDAS, we do parentheses first, which we don't have here, and then exponents next. We do have exponents, so that means the first thing we'll do to simplify is find what 4 squared is. So we bring down the 3 times 4 squared is 16 times 10 plus 10 divided by 2 minus 6 times 4. So that's all of our exponents. Next in PEMDAS is to do multiplication and division from left to right. So starting on the left-hand side, we'll start with multiplying 3 times 16. And we can work that off to the side. 16 times 3, 3 times 6 is 18, so write the 8, carry the 1. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So 16 times 3 is 48. So we have 48 times 10 plus 10 divided by 2 minus 6 times 4. We need to continue working our multiplication and division from left to right. 
So we'll next multiply 48 times 10, which is 480 plus 10 divided by 2 minus 6 times 4. We'll move past the 480 plus and we'll move right on to division. 480 plus 10 divided by 2 is 5 minus 6 times 4. We have one more multiplication operation to take care of, 6 times 4. So we have 480 plus 5 minus 6 times 4, which is 24. Now we need to go back and consult PEMDAS. We're finished with all our multiplication and division. So we're going to do now our addition and subtraction from left to right. So that means we start with adding 480 plus 5, which gives us 485 minus 24. And 485 minus 24, you can work that off to the side. 5 minus 4 is 1, 8 minus 2 is 6, and we bring down the 4, so we get 461 which is answer choice B. If W equals 7, calculate the value of the following expression. 8W squared minus 12W plus the quantity of 4W minus 5 plus 6. In order to simplify, the first thing we need to do is substitute 7 for w. So we start by bringing down the 8. We're going to replace w with 7, so it's 8 times 7 squared minus 12. Again, replace w with 7, so times 7 plus, bring down the parentheses, for times w or times 7 minus 5 plus 6. In order to simplify this, we must follow the order of operations or PEMDAS. We start with parentheses, then exponents, then we multiply and divide from left to right and finally, we add and subtract from left to right. So that means we need to start with anything inside parentheses. So here we have a couple of different operations inside our parentheses. We have multiplication and subtraction. Well, again, if we consult PEMDAS, we can see that we are supposed to always multiply and divide before we add and subtract. So that means we're starting with 4 times 7. So you'll just copy everything else. The 8 times 7 squared minus 12 times 7 plus, bring down the parentheses. Finally, we get to 4 times 7, 28 minus 5 and bring down the plus 6. So we haven't finished simplifying what's in our, our parentheses and that's what we'll do now, 28 minus 5. So bring down the 8 times 7 squared minus 12 times 7 plus 28 minus 5 is 23 plus 6. Now if we go back to PEMDAS after parentheses, which we have no more of, we then simplify any exponents. And we do have exponents right here, 7 squared. So that's what we'll do next. 8 times 7 squared means 7 times 7, and that's 49. Minus 12 times 7 plus 23 plus 6. Okay, after exponents is our multiplication and division from left to right. So first we see 8 times 49. We can just go off to the side and multiply that. 49 times 8. 8 times 9 is 72, so write the 2 and carry the 7. 8 times 4 is 32, 
32 plus 7 is 392. So we have 392 minus 12 times 7 plus 23 plus 6. We need to continue multiplying and dividing from left to right. So next I see 12 times 7. So we'll multiply that. 12 times 7. 7 times 2 is 14. Write the 4, carry the 1. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 1 is 8. So that's 84. Bring down the 392 minus 84 plus 23 plus 6. So all we have left now is our addition and subtraction from left to right. So we start with 392 minus 84. I'll do that over here. So we have to borrow from the 9, it becomes an 8. We have 12 here. 12 minus 4 is 8. 8 minus 8 is 0, and we bring down the 3. So we have 308 plus 23 plus 6. So that means we need to add 23 to our 308. That's the next thing we're going to do. 8 plus 3 is 11. Carry the 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, and bring your 3 down. So we have 331 plus 6. And that's the last thing we're going to do is add 6 to 331. So we get 7, 3, 3. Our final answer is 337, which is answer choice C. If x divided by 3 plus 7 equals 35, what is the value of x? I'm going to start by writing this problem. x divided by 3 plus 7 equals 35. The first thing we want to do is subtract 7 from both sides. Because a positive 7 and a negative 7 are additive inverses of each other and they cancel. So on the left side, we're left with x divided by 3. And on the right side, 35 minus 7 is 28. The opposite of dividing by 3 is multiplying by 3. So now we need to multiply both sides by 3. If you put this 3 over 1, now you're multiplying two fractions together and the numerator and this denominator cross cancel and you're simply left with x divided by 1, which is just x. So now if we determine what 28 times 3 is, we'll have our answer. 3 times 8 is 24, so write the 4 and carry the 2. And 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. So that means that x is 84, which is answer C. In the following equation, solve for x by factoring. 2x squared minus 7x equals x squared minus 12. In order to factor, we need to get all of our terms on the same side. So that means subtracting an x squared from both sides so that we have x squared now minus 7x and then adding 12 to both sides. So now this is plus 12 equals 0. Now we're ready to factor. So I have a binomial and a binomial equals 0. I know my first two terms are going to be, or my first term in each binomial, because x times x gives me x squared. To find these second numbers in each binomial, these numbers must be factors of 12 that add to be negative 7. Let's start by looking at the factors of 12. 1 and 12 are factors of 12. 
2 and 6 are factors of 12, and also 3 and 4 are factors of 12. Now again, these numbers have to add to give us a negative 7, while also multiplying to give us a positive 12. The only way these numbers can do both those things is if they're both negative. Because a negative times a negative will give us the positive 12, but when we add the two negatives together, we'll get our negative 7. So negative 1 and negative 12, that's negative 13, not negative 7. Doesn't work. Negative 2 and negative 6 is negative 8, not negative 7. Doesn't work. But negative 3 and negative 4 does give me negative 7. So I found my numbers, negative 3 and negative 4. And then if you just FOIL, you can check your answer to see if it's correct. So we do first times first, x times x, x squared. Outer, x times negative 4 is negative 4x. Then the inner, negative 3 times x, negative 3x. So you have negative 4x plus negative 3x, which is the middle term, negative 7x. And then finally, the last, negative 3 times negative 4, which is a positive 12. So now we've checked and we know that we factored correctly. But we still haven't solved for x. Here we have two expressions that we're multiplying together and that gives us zero. The only way you can multiply two numbers together and get zero is if one of them is zero. So that means that either x minus 3 must be zero or x minus 4 must be zero. And now we just solve each equation. So add 3 and 3. Those cancel because they're additive inverses and x equals 3 or add 4 and add 4, and those cancel because they're additive inverses, and x equals 4. So that means x equals 3 and 4, which is answer B. If 25% of x is 250, what is the value of x? We're going to start by decoding this sentence. We're going to translate it into a math equation. It says 25% of x. And this word of tells us to multiply. So I'm going to put a little multiplication dot above it. So we're going to multiply 25% and x. Is is a very important word in math because is is an equal sign. So wherever you see that word is, you can put an equal sign there. And now we can take this and write our equation. So 25% times x, we have to take our percent and change it into a decimal. So 25%, the decimal's behind it, and you move it two places to the left to change a percent into a decimal. So that's 25 hundredths times x, or just 25 hundredths x, is or equals 250. Now that we've written our equation, we just need to solve. So this is 25 hundredths times x. To solve for x, we do the opposite of multiplying, and we divide both sides by 25 hundredths. So 25 hundredths divided by 25 hundredths is 1, and 1 times x is simply x. So those cancel out. We bring down the equal sign. And if you have a calculator, of course you can divide that in a calculator. But I'm going to work it out off to the side. So we have 250 divided by 25 hundredths. We can't divide by a decimal, so we need to move the decimal two places to the right, which means we do the same with our number under our division sign. So we have to add two zeros to it. And now we can divide. 25 goes into 25 one time. 25 times 1 is 25, and we subtract and get 0. We bring down a 0, and 25 goes into 0, 0 times. 
And that's going to keep happening for each one of these zeros. We're going to keep bringing down zeros, and we're going to keep getting zeros. So we end up with x is 1,000. Now, if that's a little confusing to you, you can do it one other way. So you can rewrite this as 250 divided by, and then 25 hundredths is 1 fourth. So it's 250 divided by 1 fourth, which still might look a little confusing, but we can even rewrite that to 250 divided by 1 fourth. And then we can copy, change, flip. We can copy 250, change division to multiplication, and flip 1 fourth to be 4. 250 times 4 is 1,000, which is the same thing we got when we divided with our decimal. So either way, the answer is 1,000. And if you put that back into the sentence, it makes sense. 25% of 1,000 is 250. If the volume of a cube is 8 cubic centimeters, what is the length of the cube? Let's start with what we know. The volume is 8 cubic centimeters. The formula for volume of a cube is side cubed. And we know what the volume is, so substitute 8 centimeters cubed for volume. So that equals the side cubed, or the length cubed. Since it's a cube, all of the dimensions are the same. So if they ask for length, we can find that. It's the same as the width and the height, which is why we just use an S instead of length times width times height. But how do we solve? So we have side cubed. If we want to solve for side, then we need to do the opposite of cubing, which is to cube root. So take the cube root of both sides. And when you're taking the cube root, really what you're doing is you're finding what number times itself three times would give you eight. And that number would be two. Two times two times two is 8, or 2 cubed is 8. So the cube root of 8 is 2. And the cube root of centimeters cubed is simply centimeters. And that equals the cube root of side cubed, which is side. Or again, length, or width, or height. All the dimensions are the same. So what is the length? Answer B, 2 centimeters. Simplify the following expression. The quantity 2x squared plus 3 times the quantity 2x minus 1. To simplify, we need to FOIL. The F in FOIL stands for first. So we're going to take the first term in our first binomial and multiply it times the first term in our second binomial. First and first. 2x squared times 2x. 2 times 2 is 4. x squared times x is x cubed. Next we do O, which stands for outer. So those are the two terms on the outside, which would be 2x squared and negative 1. So 2x squared times a negative 1 is negative 2x squared. Then our inner terms are the two terms on the inside, 3 times 2x, which is a positive 6x. And then finally, our last terms. So the last term in the first set of parentheses and the last term in the second set of parentheses, 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3. Then we'd want to look and see if we had any like terms to combine, and we don't. 
we have a cubic x term, a squared x term, an x term, and then just a constant. So that's our answer, which matches answer choice A. Simplify the following expression. 2x to the 4th, y to the 7th, m squared, z, times 5x squared, y cubed, m to the 8th. I'm going to start by multiplying my like terms together. So I can rewrite this. It's multiplication, so you can multiply in any order you want. So I'm going to multiply 2 times 5 together. And then I've got this x to the 4th times the x squared. And then we have y to the 7th times y cubed. And then we have m squared times m to the 8th. And then finally we just have this z, so times z. And now we'll simplify each one of these. So 2 times 5 is 10. And so right now you could already eliminate answer choice B because we're multiplying. We're not adding 2 and 5 together. We're multiplying. And then we get to our x's. x to the 4th times x squared. And what that really is, x to the 4th means x times itself four times while x squared means x times itself two times. So when we multiply x to the fourth times x squared, we're multiplying x times itself a total of six times. So it's x to the sixth. You can see what we end up doing is adding those exponents together. And it's the same thing with y to the seventh times y cubed. Let's look at that one a little differently. So y to the seventh times y cubed. y to the seventh is y times itself seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times y cubed. So times one, two, three. So what we end up with is y times itself a total of ten times. So y to the 7th times y cubed is y to the 10th. Or again, we're adding those exponents. Then we have m squared times m to the 8th. So same concept. Again, we're going to add our exponents. And we get m to the 10th. And then finally, times z. So that means our answer is d. 10, x to the 6th, y to the 10th, m to the tenth, z. A classroom contains 13 boys and 18 girls. If a student's name is chosen randomly, what is the probability it will be a girl's name? To find probability, we need to write a fraction. And that fraction will be how many girls' names there are out of how many total names there are. So since there are 18 girls, that means we have 18 girl names to choose from. Out of, now we have to add in the 13 boys to get our total. So 18 plus 13 is 31. So 18 names out of a total of 31 names are going to be girls. If we look at our answers, though, our answers are not in fraction form. Our answers are all in percentage. So we need to convert our fraction into a decimal and then into a percent. So to convert our fraction into a decimal, we just divide. 18 divided by 31. 31 can't be divided into 18, but we can add a decimal and a zero. 31 does go into 180 five times. 
31 times 5 is 155. Borrow from the 8 becomes a 7. Then we have 10 minus 5, which is 5. And 7 minus 5, which is 2. Then we add a 0 and bring it down. And 31 goes into 250 eight times. 31 times 8 is 248. We subtract and we get 2. Then you can add a 0 and bring it down. But 31 doesn't go into 20. So we get 0. Goes into 20 zero times. Now we can stop here because if you look at your answers, they don't go beyond two numbers. And to change our decimal into a percent, we just move our decimal two places to the right. So 58 hundredths is equal to 58 percent, which is answer C. If x minus 9 equals 2x plus 10, what is the value of x? To solve for x, the first thing we need to do is get all of our x terms on the same side of the equal sign. And we can do that two different ways. One is we could subtract x from both sides, which would eliminate x from the left side. Or we could subtract 2x from both sides, which would eliminate 2x from the right side. I prefer subtracting x from both sides. x minus x is 0. They cancel because they're additive inverses of each other. So on the left side, we're left with negative 9. We bring down our equal sign. Then we have 2x minus x which gives us simply x. Sometimes people think that 2x minus x would be 2. But you have to think about what you're really doing. I always like to relate things to money. So if you had $2 and I took away a dollar from you, then you would still have a dollar left. That dollar wouldn't magically turn into something else. It's still a dollar. So 2x minus x, we still have an x left, plus 10. To get x by itself, we need to get rid of this plus 10. So the opposite of adding 10 is subtracting 10. So subtract 10 from both sides. Negative 9 and negative 10 is negative 19. Bring down the equal sign, and we have our x plus 10 and a negative 10 cancels. They're additive inverses of each other. So we get that x equals negative 19 or a.